So last time I was allocated an hour. You know, does that need focus? Or is that in focus? See if it needs a focus. To me, it's out of focus. It could be my eyes. Last time I was allocated an hour, but now they said, Jim, if you want more hands-on, you got a half hour. <laughs> so we'll go through this. Um, so, um, you know, I think the biggest, uh, I think what we're going to see, and I've probably been saying this for a year or two now, um, the technology that is really going to change a lot is, is how we polish vehicles. And because when I put out ceramic coatings and stuff, I was... I put out really good products and I saw, I was seeing failure. I think, and I've talked to other people, a lot of people saw uh, coating failure. And, and then they come up with boosters and everything else to try to replace that. I don't think people knew how much coatings have failed. I don't know if you've seen that, but I identified what, in my, in my process of coming with the polish, I was identified what the issue is. And I'm kind of going to walk through that here. Um, let me see if I've... So... We've seen, we've seen in the last hundred years, you've seen a lot of technology breakthroughs in paint. Paint used to be made uh, from the lac bug in Brazil, and it was an organic matter you put on the car. And um, it, didn't, it, it was great at the time, but it didn't last so long. Where are you going? For, uh, automotive paint. So you had, you had it started out, this is hundred years ago, but it's organic material, and they put shellac on cars. And then it would, it would actually crack and break after like three years. Then he went to lacquer, uh, base coat, clear coat, finishes, and it started, started to get inorganic material. And then now we have ceramic clears and ceramic paint. It's in, inorganic. And what's the difference between organic? Organic, you think you go to Whole Foods and you get your apple or banana or something like that. It breaks down faster. And that's what carnauba is. If we go to the next one, wait. Um, this is the history of wax. First generation, they went to uh, carnauba wax. Paint sealant, this is a, a hybrid of um, synthetic and uh, organic material. It was a blend. And then we get the third generation. I mean, I was very skeptical when it first came to ceramic coatings. No way, how can it last that long, this and that? But wow, it's some really good stuff, and it lasts a long time. So paint has, the technology of paint has gone through the roof. They've gone from organic to inorganic. And same thing with our coatings that we have. And they last a lot longer, looks great. Our polishes have not done the same. The biggest milestone in polishes has been they went from animal fats to oil oils. I mean, animal fats is an oil to more of a mi mineral type of oil. Sorry. Hello, what's your name? Was crazy. Kale. Kale. I'm Jim. Jim, nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, traffic's horrible here in Chicago. Yeah, I gave myself an extra 30 minutes. Where are you coming in from? Waukesha. Waukesha. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a distance. Um, just going over the uh, the organic matter to inorganic. And it, it seems subtle, but it's actually, it's really important. So he, a lot of the polishes, how they're made, they still use that inorganic. They still use carnauba. They still use paraffin. And so you're spending all this time polishing a vehicle, all these man hours. How are you getting that off? Well, they say use an IPA wipe. Well, I, I'm not too sure. It's not really coming off. You still have trace amounts of oil on there, so that's, that could be an issue. It is an issue. So this is an example of some organic, uh, what's in coatings that make it last. That's uh, nanotechnology. This is a definition. We don't have to worry about definition here. Coatings, what is awesome about coatings, it's a 100% inorganic membrane. That's why it lasts so long. It's almost like a plastic, but a real hard plastic. Uh, it's waterproof. It's invisible to the eye, prevents corrosion and oxidation. Uh, nanotech coating is breathable. Surfaces can last years and years, 25 years, easily, um, if it's prepped correctly. The biggest issue in coatings is adhesion. Um, so achieving head adhesion is imperative to the success of the coating chemistry to bond. And this is a mechanical bond. It's not a physical bond. When we did poly sealants and we did waxes, it was a physical bond that's on there. With nano coating, you guys know it's a mechanical bond. So the hills and valleys of paint, the nano, the nano means one billionth, and it actually anchors into those hills and valleys and bonds. So you have a, a surface is new. That's why it's hydrophobic, because that, the surface has changed. The, the surface, the substrate, has changed. 
And that's what you're doing there. So it's a mechanical bond in there. So how do you get in, how do you make sure you get that mechanical bond in there? When the paint, the paint is really good, your coatings are really good, but in between there's the polish. And if you have a lot of uh, organic material in there, that can impede that bonding process. And a simple IPA wipe downs is not a very good way to get it all out. It's a great dis disinfectant. This kills COVID, right? The alcohol does. But as far as being a degreaser, because that's what you're putting on the car, um, you need a good degreaser to get that out. It's not that great. Even I know people that do an IPA wipe two, two times, and you're not getting it all out because all those man hours you, you're pushing that in. Um, it's not coming out. We've done tests, and it still shows on the surface. The culprits are paraffin wax, carnauba wax, sericin wax, beeswax. So mineral oil, oil and silicone oil. These things are great, makes it shine. And a lot of OEMs, they don't care when we first came out with polishes, there was imperfections of the car. So they just wanted to polish, they wanted oil on there, and it shines, it looks great. They don't care about durability. Um, and oil and water don't mix. So even with oil, you put water on there, the beads, are, it's, it's gonna bead off because they don't mix, right? So it, it's gonna show well. And this is a close-up of Coating failure. So these are the hill, this is the paint, hills and valleys. When you get little trace amounts in here, the bonding cannot adhere, has difficult time adhering. If it doesn't, it's just gonna come off. And that's where you have coating failure. This is the godfather of polishes. And he talks about um, imperfect cleaning and he talks about IPA and how to, how to get that off. This guy is, is a godfather in there. I won't get deep into it, but he, in his book, he talks about the issue of trying to keep things clean. So cleanliness and adhesion go hand in hand. If you're looking for an adhesion process to be successful, then you're also absolutely interested in the materials involved in the application. You need the right tool for the job. For the, if you're gonna put a coating on the car, you need the right tool. But I also think, even if somebody wanna put a wax on a car, if you have, if, if you have this, 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 this is creating um, a longer bond for you. But this is really the right tool for any kind of nanotechnology, no matter the brand. You know, as long as you've got good nanotechnology, um, they will, they don't know brands. So if nanotechnology, they will, um, they will cross-link and bond and becomes one uniform level of protection. So let's talk about a little bit about polishes. Um, so for the last hundred years um, or more, how they make polishes, it's old technology. Um, basically, they crush rocks. And this is showing the crushed rocks, and then they have these meshes on different sizes that, that you want. So you get in stuck between, sometimes you get large, you, you can only get a medium, a medium or an average size of a rock. Some are large, some are big, but most of them fall between here. And basically, and this is enlarged, of course, but on the micro size, you get rocks. So you abrade the surface with these rocks, and they have sharp angles, and they're and they, they're ragged and rigid and everything like that, so you're really abrading the, the surface. I'll let you pass these down. They're not real rocks. Um, only rep represent rocks. But you see these sharp angles and everything. So what's happening when you go with, a, with a, a polisher and you abrade the surface with that? You're tearing off a lot of paint because there, there's an average size. Some are large, some are big. And I found out to get the shine, you had to dump a lot of oil on there to bring back the shine. And, and there's better abrasives out there, and we found them in the um, medical field. And they're spheres, and you can get them of a certain size. You want a certain size, um, and this, is, this represents spheres of a certain size, and we get a braid more accurately, and I don't have to beat up the surface of paint so much, we have to dump all this oil in there. And that's, so the science of smooth, if someone polishes, paint naturally has some hills and valleys, but actually they're a little bit bigger hills and valleys when, after you braid the surface with a, a, a polish. This represents nanotechnology anchoring in, and this is protecting it. But when you get a smoother surface, when I mean, you don't braid the surface so much, you get, you, it, shine pops out, you get a nice shine. You don't need to dump in all the stuff that that might uh, fill these areas. We talk about fillers, carnubas, 
and paraffin are nat natural fillers. But you fill those things so because you're just abraded the surface with those big rocks in there, the large sizes. So when we go in there, we it's smooth, and if it's smooth, the light reflects right off. This it's di more difficult to get the shine. That's why you need oil in polishes for it to reflect, and light will bounce right right back off to you. You just need more of it. So with this new abrasion, you don't abrade as much. You don't have to put oil. You don't have to put the oil that, that you have to. And I'm trying to get to an inorganic polishing system. Inorganic, 100%. So it mirrors the paint, and it mirrors what you're going to put on top, top of it. Um, we need a chemistry that creates stable surface. So, so we have to have a gel. So I talked about the abrasion. Um, so... What, we, what I do is that we put the, we got a nanotechnology gel. There's, it's totally inorganic, and we put those abrasions in it, so it's suspended in there. So when you, when you use these products and te test it out, kind of compare it against polishes you've had before. It's probably an oily res residue you get before. This is more of a, it's, it's kind of comes out like toothpaste. Um, it's just some slipperiness to it. Um, that's some of the, um, uh, the gel the nanotechnology gel that's in there, and, um, but it's not, it's not an oil. And so you can feel the difference. And I'm gonna try a little demonstration. I haven't really done too much, but I think it, it may show what some of the differences are between polishes and what, what we use, the primary technology. You know, whenever I, I come up with a product, I hate, I, I never liked the products that did two things. Like, con cleans and conditions leather at the same time. I'm like, how are you getting the dirt and then this, and, and how does that work? And there's some other things. How do you shampoo and condition your hair at the same time? You know, different things like that it always bug me. But however, in this technology, having inorganic gel and the abrasions in there, you cut, when you're cutting, you're covered with nanotechnology at the same time. It's almost like being in a clean room. You're, um, you're doing it in a perfect environment. And because you're, you're abrading the surface, and then the nanotechnology is right there. You, that's why you don't have to wipe off. You don't have to do a wipe off, unless there's a little bit of dusting or there's something else you can, or it's a little uh, smeary for some reason, you can wipe that off. But you cut and cover it at every stage when you go through. So it's building a foundation. This is, you're building a nanotechnology foundation there. Uh. And it creates anchor points. It's looking for adhesion. So you got nanotechnology there waiting for, if you want to uh, put nanotechnology, it's waiting to cross-link. Like you get other brands, you get our brands. But those nano structures, they come together. And as they cure, they become one piece, a new sur surface. But you're starting out with a great foundation. So... We've been using this for years now, but we get, we get great performance, we get great shine, um, and uh, actually saves time too. I think you're saving time with this. And, and that's pretty much my talk, but I want to show you something. Um, Chris Metcalf, can you show, send me a Z1? Can you show me a Z1 here? Yeah, you can hit the lights. So... I was trying to find a way to visually show. So this is Rupes polish. And this is true for anyone. All these polishes, I've seen a lot of them and all the formulations, pretty much the same. They have different degrees of, of oils and different things they put in there. But um, I just want to... I'm sure you put this in water. I'm just diluting it, seeing what happens when you dilute it. I just did an experiment not too long ago, and I'm going to see what. And I'm going to cross contaminate, but don't tell my uh, chemistry uh, professor. <laughs> so I'm mixing this up. So this thing. Over here, you see mostly, and it's just a general filter on here. It's just it's not even that small, but but everything comes out basically. Um, what it's leaving, you got you, everything's coming through in here. What I found here, the nanotechnology. Oh, uh, where 
get this. Well, this is a clean one, right? So, so what is this stuff that's being left behind here? That can't be diluted, or this or that. What is it? What is that gunk? Um, actually, this is this is the foundation. This is nanotechnology. Now, it kind of, it's semi-hard. I mean, it's semi-soft. Um, this is why you know uh, Zaya was talking about. Hey, there's some cementing issues with your product, and what it is, it's laying down a base. If you use too much product, this this will sit there, and sometimes it's hard to get off or wipe off. It probably means you use too much product. Because we're really, in any kind of product you use, you're, you are putting something on the surface, whether it's oil, silicone, or anything else. With this, what you're putting down, you are putting down a foundation of, of nanotechnology. And if you use too much, it just can't take anymore. It can't handle anymore. So it's, it turns white. One thing's great about this, you can use, we figured on a car, you use an ounce or less of our product on an entire car. This is a one, I mean, if you're doing paint correction, you're probably going to use more than that. But you are leaving, there is something behind, but that's a good thing. That's the foundation of, of and that's the only reason why it's white. When, when you just put molecule thick or two or three, you put layers on there, it's perfectly clear. But you're leaving down a base of protection so you can put something else on top. Now, if you do correction, doing three layers of correction, um, sometimes on the on 45, the last one, there's a ghosting that, that you see, especially on black cars. It just means it's, it can't take anymore. When you put a coating on it, it goes away. It's looking for adhesion. That's sitting there and said, hey, I, want, I need to grab onto something. And so that's what that demonstrates. Jim? Yes? When you, you, when you say 150 and then you go to oh, 95, yeah. your, your different nanosurface primers, when you go to the second one, does it add more? Because it, it is it, adding. Yeah. It, it'll yeah. add a little more on top of right. the stack. More yeah. Layers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The last one, 45, is, you know, some people start at 150, and the results are great depending on the paint. Some hard paints, they look at that 150, they go, oh, that's great. You still have adhesion there, and you could coat. If you're satisfied with it and it looks good to you, you can stop there. So as you add more, it's still the, all the same base. Basically, it's a different different sphere. So the number stands for the size of the sphere that we want to use. Yeah.